So in a previous video, we talked about the Fusion Theme Builder elements, like the title and text block and a bunch of different elements, in sort of a high-level overview. But in today's video, I want to do a deep dive on the top five Fusion Theme Builder elements that if you get the hang of using those five, you can pretty much <laughs> build a really nice website that looks you know, somewhat similar to this one. So let's dive in. Uh, the first one is going to be the text block, which is pretty straightforward. I mean, we touched on this. Um, it's a simple text editor here. You've got some additional functionality. You can set the alignment here. Uh, but one thing that I tend to use quite a bit is this element visibility. So let's say this title is too big on a mobile device. I can set it to not show on mobile devices and then duplicate it and set this one to only show on mobile devices. And then I could edit this one to make it smaller so that it doesn't take up so much space when it's on a mobile device. And ultimately that just gives you the flexibility to uh, edit both the mobile version and the desktop version of the site. So. Uh, beyond that, let's just set this back so that it doesn't get screwed up here. Uh, there's some design elements. You can choose the font family, the line height, uh, some different stuff in here. And then there's also animations. I don't really like to use the animations because it's, it tends to slow the website down, but you can have it fade in or slide in from the left or right or whatever you want to do there. And these are going to be pretty similar at least the extras is going to be pretty similar across all the different elements. Uh, so that's a text block. Now there's also a title block, which we sh probably should be using. But we can say something like Z Grills. And instead of formatting through the text builder here, you just leave it as is. And then you go to the design section, and this is where you have the functionality to edit the title however you want. So you can center the title. You can choose whether it's H1, H2. You can actually even set it as a div. And then you can also set the size. So let's say we want it to be an H1, but we only want it to be 30 pixels. We can choose the family, the font family, line height, all that different stuff. But then we can add some cool features like text shadow. Uh, you can even manipulate the font color here. And then there's also this separator. Let's see if it creates the separator. So I'll just view this real quick so you can see how this looks different from the title that's set up right below it. So it's the same, essentially. Well, it's not full caps, but these separators go off to the left and right. So sometimes it's nice if you have like a, a big section that's full width. I don't think we have, so like right here, we could have a separator going off to the left and to the right just to break up the section, but we're already breaking it up with this, this uh, change in color here. So that's the basics of the title. We'll just delete that guy for now. And the next most used item is going to be an image. So the image element, you can just come in here, search for image create the image here and then you can choose to upload whatever image that you want so let's say we want to use this image I'm just picking a random example and then from there we can set it to center that image we can put a border choose the border color a border radius which is going to curve the, the uh, corners so that they're not square they're kind of rounded uh, you can have a light box you can even set a URL to that image. So when someone clicks on that image, it goes to a specific page like we have with these images here. So if we click this image, it's actually going to open up that product that's linked up from that image. And then you'll notice when I hover over this image, it lifts up. So that is right here. So on, on image hover, oh, image hover, you can choose to have it zoom in, lift up, zoom out. And that will show people essentially that it's clickable. So when someone hovers over it, it zooms in, it changes from this basic mouse to a pointy finger, then they are gonna know that they can click on that image there. 
Um, and then you can choose the size. So you could set a max width if you don't want it to be too big. There's, I mean, there's all sorts of stuff you can do in here. And then again, you have the animation. So you can have it uh, slide in, bounce in, do whatever you want there. And then you can also even change the color of the image, which is pretty cool. So you can increase the brightness, saturation, hue, all that stuff. So if you want, you can play around with all that stuff. I'm not going to go too deep into color changing. Uh, and then again, you can choose if you want this image to show up on just small screens or medium and large screens or however you want to set that. So we're just going to delete that for now. And then the third uh, most common element that we use is a button. So the button is going to be right here. And then you can choose a button URL. I'm just going to put a blank link in there for now. You can set the button text. You can decide if you want it to open in a new tab, which would be underscore blank. Or you can have a light box, meaning when someone clicks on it, it'll pop up in a big box and they can view it in full detail. Um, you can choose the alignment, even uh, anchor modal. So you can have like a button that scrolls down to that that element we won't go too deep into that and then again the, the visibility here and then uh, the design is going to give you some flexibility as far as how the button looks so you can make it a small button an extra large button you can choose to have it full span meaning these are set to full span so it's going to take up the whole area here uh, if we just set it as default it would cut off these edges here and so the button would only be about this wide rather than taking up the whole section. You can even choose an icon so if you want to have like the arrow pointing to the text which sort of increases the likelihood that someone's going to notice and want to click on it. You can change the icon position so you can have it be off to the right. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do here and again you can have it uh, animated as well. So that's buttons, and then there's uh, just the normal text block, which is going to be the most one of the most common used because that's how you're going to put all this text into the website. And that's honestly pretty straightforward. Uh, it's just this; it's basically just the same as the default text builder, uh, but it gives you some flexibility here with choosing the font and different things. If you don't want to code in HTML and choose the font in HTML and all that you can just do it right through here so that's the fourth element and then the final element that I use quite often is at the bottom here and that is the code block so the code block just allows you to put a piece of code into the website so here we have an email capture form for the newsletter and all we did was create a code block which is going to be right here and then you just paste in that I just paste in that short code and click save and then that's gonna load that piece of code so if you have some custom JavaScript like you're embedding something you can put it in there um, and those are the five main elements that I I personally use continuously on pretty much every single page that I have ever built or worked on in Avada so I hope you found that helpful. If there are any of these elements or anything to do with these elements that you have questions about, don't hesitate to ask. You can just drop your questions down in the comments below. I'll get to them there. And until next time, take care.